you just had to do it. <laughs> you just had to, you had to grab me by the lapels and pull me in all over again. You had to, to, to scream out of me that fanboy rage, that ghost in the shell fanboy rage all over again. You had, you had to bring me back to that place. All with a 30 second teaser. The control teaser, as I've seen it listed, but I've seen a couple of different versions of it, and there's some different footage, you know, uh, amidst all of the different ones. Uh, some looking very much Arise-esque, some looking very much 1995 Ghost in the Shell film-esque, and uh, very much dealing with one word, one singular word that has unraveled all of my optimism all over again. All of my primped-up hope for this film actually having, containing within it, uh, some level of substance, some level of depth and character in the character that is formerly, as far as this movie is concerned, Motoko Kusanagi, the major. They had to give her a name. <laughs> they gave her a name. And it is the tipping point of what has drawn me back into my my just trepidation and my, you know, sort of rage, <laughs> sort of fanboy ghost on the show rage. Um, the whole, the whole, again, the whitewashing thing. I've already spoken at length about that, about how I wish this was a Japanese helmed project, or at least, you know, had in its sort of a, a main faceted main character role, you know, someone who harkened back to the Japanese origins of the original piece and everything like that, whatever whatever you want to say about it. The entire second full-length trailer really won me over, really got me mulling over my own reservations and, and conflictual feelings, and I spoke at length about each of those things, one by one, and I really had a sense that while it was very scarce, and while it was a very small amount, it was still peppering in the things I asked for. Characterization, the soul-searching and depth of Motoko Kusanagi, or in this case, the Major, all that kind of stuff. And I believe in the early going, whether it was a post I made on Facebook, or whether it was somewhere in one of the videos I was speaking about the project, and being very disparaging about the project, I, I listed off a couple of, like, off-the-cuff, just, you know, highfalutin, hilarious uh, alternate names for Motoko Kusanagi that I might go with. Uh, you know, I think there is a chance that the name that you hear in this little 30-second spot might have been one of the ones I suggested. And that is, if you're listening carefully, pay close attention. No, it's not Motoko Kusanagi anymore. No, it's just, you know, they could have just left it as the major. Like, if they didn't give her name, I would have actually been fairly okay with that. Uh, you know, not giving her a personalization along those lines. Because it's really what makes her human is her journey, you know. Uh, we're dealing with a world that, at least as far as this new spot is concerned, the marketing sort of point of view that they're they're adapting for this new spot is a very action-heavy sort of revenge tale. You know, it's kind of like a, a steroidal Blade Runner-esque six million dollar man uh, out for revenge, gunning for this, you know, a sort of evil antagonistic syndicate, which I've seen some people speculating is actually Section 6, as opposed to Section 9, which is the Major's outfit and everything. They're always sort of combative and, and things like that. Uh, always gunning for, you know, the, the top spot in, in that particular field of public security and all that kind of stuff. And uh, sometimes people cross over from one team to the other. Sometimes it's bad news. <laughs> sometimes, it, you know, Section 9 finds someone uh, uh, well-fitted to their outfit and things of that sort, depending on the Iteration. But the whole point of the Major's soul-searching is that she's very human at her core. For all of her prosthesis, for all of her cybernetic enhancements, which in this case was as, as a result of an attack. I thought it was an accident playing into kind of the lore, the mystery, uh, the enigmatic nature of the past of the Major in the standalone complex anime series, as well Kind of sort of the Arise uh, uh, thing. I'm not as familiar with Arise as I would like to be, so I'm not sure what the ins and outs of, of the Major's origins in that story are. Uh, I'm a little forgetful on that. But the whole idea is you don't need to give her a name to make her relatable, to make her human. In fact, 
if we're going to get into the semantics of, of the whole whitewashing versus, uh, you know, having an Asian or Japanese actress in that, you know, main character role, you know, most people aren't going to relate to someone named Motoko Kusanagi. They're going to relate to her being called the major. She's the leader of the team. There's a reason she is. And her personal dilemma in the story is the very human central core of, of her character, the very relatable aspect, trying to find oneself, trying to make amends with the divide between technology and humanity, the very bio-natural aspects of, of the human body versus the soul, the energy, the essence, and how that corresponds to technology and digital manifestations of that, all that kind of stuff. You know, <laughs> I had my ho hopes set high because we were seeing hints and whispers of this in the full-length trailer, the second trailer that there was. And so with this 30-second spot, we've rewound all of that. We've wiped the slate clean, and we've put an emphasis on revenge, revenge, revenge. Action, action, action. And we're given the Major's name. Mira. You know, Mira is a great name if you happen to be Aquaman's girlfriend. Mira is a great name if you happen to be a lieutenant on the original series Enterprise, uh, guesting in, in the episode The Lights of Zatar, Mira Romain. Mira is a great name for the daughter of Paul Sorvino, who's quite the looker, I might add. <laughs> and, uh, these are all great Miras. Mira is not, however a great substitute name for Motoko Kusanagi. I much rather would they have stripped any personalization, any name be given to her that she did not pick of her own choosing, of her own volition, because this is, for all intents and purposes, even if it is just a base action-y revenge plot, you could still give her a depth of character by having her choose her own name, much in the way in the original Planet of the Apes films, Caesar chose his own name, much in, in the newer sort of incarnation of that was the same thing. He, he kind of chose his name. There is a level of that that you could put into play with a character like this, where if she, especially if she's trying to overcome oppression, she's been you know tooled to become this weapon and and be used for a specific nefarious purpose, and she's trying to rebel against that. Have her rebel as a character, not just with her actions, but with her giving herself a name and a purpose and a way to humanize what she has internally. Begin the film just calling her the major and have that be who she is known throughout, you know, throughout the entirety of it, be that who she is known as, and then she accomplishes her mission, and she picks or chooses a name. If she had chosen at that point Motoko, it would have been much more palatable, even if it's ScarJo playing what is supposed to be a Japanese-originating character. But they gave her the name Mira. <laughs> Oh. And then, again, just the overemphasis on the action and the revenge plot and, and just seeing it siphoned completely out of any of that character depth and finding herself and soul-searching and all these things. This doctor-scientist character who stuck out like a sore thumb to me in, in the second, you know, full trailer that we got. Once again, she she I, I could buy her more in this, getting more of a sort of, uh, you know, connotation of what was going on, the context of what was going on with that. You know, I, I mean, Motoko shocks awake. I, the Major. I still want to call her Motoko even now. The Major, Mira, shocks awake and she's exclaiming, why can't I feel my body? Oh, it's all completely new. You know, we had the money. We had the technology. We fixed you. But... We have Kuze, this puppet master-esque antagonist, I guess. No, they didn't give you your life. They stole it. They stole your family. They stole all this stuff. There is still the hints and whispers, but not enough. You've wiped most of that out just to have this be an action fest, a revenge flick. And then you... Mira. Mira. 
It just feels lazy. It just feels like an oversimplification. I'm still going to, you know, even at this late day, asshole Johnny's still going to go see the movie. I'm still going to go see it. I'm still going to be hopeful. I'm still going to try to like it for what it is. But are we sure this isn't Resident Evil all over again? Are we sure this isn't whatever that Mila Jovovich movie was, uh, not the Resident Evil ones, the one where she's like in, in purple on the cover and everything, uh, ultra something, ultraviolet, something like that. Are we sure it isn't just that again? Are we sure it isn't that movie that ScarJo was in, actually? Uh, uh, somebody actually sent me the digital copy of it and I still haven't watched yet. Lucy, something like that. Are we sure it just isn't all that shit all over again? Just in the guise of Ghost in the Shell? I saw a very apt comment posted on this 30-second teaser that asked a very simple question. They've changed her name. They've changed the story. Is it still Ghost in the Shell? Is it? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I just got too much time on my hands. I'm pissed off about the name Mira. Inspired this whole rant. I'm pissed off about Mira. I love Mira when she's toting on, uh, uh, you know, every whim of Aquaman and being the badass that she is in the DC comics. Whereas uh, I love Mira Sorvino. I love Mira Romaine from the original series of Star Trek. Mira Kusanagi? Mira, what are they going to, how are they going to play this out? How, is this just a name that, you know, I mean, oh, maybe they can explain that away. Maybe it's just Julia Pinoche, Dr. Bitch, giving her a name temporarily. Maybe that wasn't a real name. Probably is. Know what I'm saying? 